Well, it's a day of uh, co-chairs here on Global Health TV today, and I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Dr. Francis Omaswa. Francis, thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us today on Global Health TV. Now, you're here with some 2,000 uh, delegates in Washington, D.C. What are some of your main messages you have for those delegates? Well, it's a, a terrific meeting. Uh, very many people from all around the world. And my message uh, to all of us participating in the meeting is that this is a, a tremendous opportunity for building global networks, for fostering global solidarity, because the health issues and health challenges of the people of the world are very closely connected. And having us all here together uh, should give us an opportunity to learn more uh, from each other and to be able to forge common action moving forward. From an African perspective, what are some of the main challenges you face? The African uh, health um, uh, developments are looking more promising now than they did 10 or 15 years ago. There is a global movement on social justice and equity, which we are benefiting from. There are new uh, directions, like in terms of uh, health workers for Africa. We've just been on a session on the global WHO code on international recruitment of health workers. And there we are talking about generating a global pool of health workers whose movement around the world uh, 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 can be regulated and coordinated through the code. Uh, we are getting an increasing burden of non-communicable diseases which is now competing with infectious diseases which we already have. And the theme of this conference is uh, non-communicable diseases. So it prepares Africa, the meeting prepares Africa to address the upcoming and rapidly uh, increasing challenge of non-communicable disease. And how easy is it for society to actually adapt to those challenges? Uh, they are, they are, but they are there, like uh, diabetes mellitus, for example. You know, 15, 20 years ago, it was less than maybe 10% of what it is today. But there have been strong movements in Africa, coupled with the international partners, to train African populations on how to easily diagnose their condition, and how to manage their lives better uh, so that the diabetes uh, can be controlled uh, without using drugs as much as possible. But then the diabetes drugs, they are expensive. But then if there is uh, uh, an understanding that this is part of the big disease burden of the population, then our governments have no choice but to get involved in supporting uh, the, 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 the interventions. $64,000 question though, Francis, how easy is it for donor countries to adapt? Well, we've been struggling with this for many years. Uh, we went to Paris in 2004 and crafted the Paris Declaration on uh, aid effectiveness, basically uh, uh, telling us, uh, telling the global community to be led by the countries. And in this very meeting, there is going to be a session tomorrow, the title of which is If Countries Lead, Will Donors Follow? And uh, I have been part of um, the Ministerial Leadership uh, Initiative for Global Health, which has been working with five countries, Nepal in Asia, and four countries in Africa, Sierra Leone, Mali, uh, Senegal, and Ethiopia, on how to strengthen the leadership of countries. And uh, it is, it is uh, getting very clear, uh, certainly to me, that if you have clarity inside the country, the donors will cooperate. Thank you very much indeed for your time today. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today on Global Health TV.